Hello and welcome to another episode of Mike and Dave's Hi-Fi Riff. I'm Mike Evans. And I'm David Price. And David, on this week's Riff, what are we going to be talking about? These. Ba, ba, ba. Look at this. I've got one too. Look at that. You've got grill on. I've got grill off. Yep. Grill on, grill off. Um, these are amazing. Um, and they are? Wolfdale Shevin XP2. <laughs> uh, yeah. Question number one, starter as if, as for 10. If you, as if you had to ask, Mike. Starter for 10, what so, year are we talking about? 1978. 1978 so, classic. What, what happened in 1978? Um, Abba's The Name of the Game got to number one. It did, it did. On so, um, um, uh, the, the, the album. The album, yep. that's right. My favourite track on that is Eagle, track yes, one. Me too. Brilliant, yeah. brilliant track. Yeah. Name of the game. Who else? Who? What else happened in seventy eight? Saturday Night Fever. Saturday Night Fever. Yeah. Yeah. Rasputin, Boney M. Yep. Um, <laughs> classic, <laughs> classic tracks. Classic tracks. And of course, we listen to some of these with these because it would be wrong not to. <laughs> and we've decided. In fact, we could we could just do a really short one minute riff here. We've decided. That if you play music from 1978 in the 1978 speakers, they sound great. They do. And that's it. Yeah. End of. Yeah. End of. <laughs> so, uh, These are really unusual, aren't they? Yeah. And you can sort of see here, uh, dual concentric design. Yep. Yeah. Um, they're paper drive units. Yep. Uh, seal box. Yep. Oh, I can show the rear. Look, yeah. oh, I'm going the wrong way. Th these there aren't standard. These no, are no, we had to put homemade, those in. Uh, yeah, yeah. Jumper cable. Um, yes, it, there's not. Um, it's gosh, it's like something out of an MK catalog, isn't it? The <laughs> the bits at the back. You know, we had, to, we had to, as you say, put a jumper cable in so yeah. we could put my exposure cable into it. Yeah. Um, but um, but and, and actually, they're very light. They're very light. Some yeah. Modern day speakers you associate with sort of weighing a ton. Yeah. Um, but they're very light. Um, but uh, these are very unusual. Aren't yeah, they? well, very, yeah, very yes unusual. and no. So, um, so these cost uh, £37 in 1978, um, and you could buy them at Lasky's. Do you remember Lasky's? Oh, gosh, yes, um, absolutely. And you could buy yeah. them in Comet, um, and they were basically a kind of mass market speaker, probably the cheapest high quality, proper hi fi, real hi fi speaker you could buy. So, there were plenty of other things around but um Wolfdale at that time was king of the uh, was king of the affordable speakers it wasn't was it, it was um, yes yeah. and um so many people may remember the uh the obviously the Chevins were the entry level uh, at 37 quid then you had the Dentons at 49 something like that 49 50 quid yeah then you had the uh Sheltons um <laughs> I know yeah so and Mike, what came above the shelves? Lintons. Yes, there you go. So you're you're just as sad as me. I, do, I, I just you enjoy know. calling you sad. So, uh, <laughs> and any 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 idea about the the top of the range? Um, gosh, at the time, uh, that's a really really good question. Uh, no, I don't know what would have been Glendale. Of course, of so, course, yes. This was the yeah the XP two range, um, and um, and it was a range that uh, you know it just had enormous appeal. It was like a kind of Ford, you know, sort of for in in car terms, you'd have, you know, Ford Escort. You'd have the sort yeah, of entry yeah, level. Yeah, this would be sort of one one point one eleven hundred yeah, L or something. Eleven hundred so, popular. Yes, wouldn't it? yes. Um, and uh, and then you'd have your thirteen hundred L, which would be the Dentons. Yeah. And your Shelton's would be the thirteen hundred GL. Yes. You know, I guess the Gear one point six would be the Glendales, wouldn't it? Sure. But, um, sure. Uh, we're uh, not quite into XR three yeah. I's yet. So. Uh, that's right. Yeah, we, we're talking Mark II escorts here. Yes, so, right. Um, but but these so so dual concentric driver. Yeah. Which is very unusual. Paper drive units. Yeah. Very unusual. And we were talking about this earlier. Very on point these days. Yeah. Paper drive units, aren't they? You, you pay an awful lot of money for some esoteric paper drive united speakers. Yes. Um, so so they they came with this. Um, Quite, you know, they, when you look at these now, they're sort of they're quite agricultural, aren't they? Really, with yep. the sort of build quality. Yeah. Um, but there's something really charming about them, isn't there? Yep. And uh, we we uh, we were playing some some songs, as I say, from 1978, um, and they were rocking. They were rocking, weren't they? Yeah. Um, the the concentric drive units take a little bit of getting used to because they are. If you're off, you're off axis, yeah. then you, you lose quite a bit of treble. You do. Um, yeah. So you basically have to get the centre of the driver at ear height. At ear height, yes. Um, yeah. Otherwise, it's like a kind of a high pass 
a high filter, basically. Yeah. And there's no crossovers. There's no crossovers. So yeah, which um, is a good thing. Which is a great thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So there's sort yeah. of straight, just pretty direct signal yeah. path straight yeah. into the speaker. Yeah. Um, but look, I, th I think, you know, we get a little bit spoiled in what we do because we end up listening to some magnificent loudspeakers and, you know, these, these sort of do definitely, definitely show their age. Um, I, I'm not sure it's something which I'd say, you know, rush out and, <laughs> and buy, you know, at, at all, at all cost, um, because they are, they are sort of very, very dated in many ways. Yeah. They sound a little bit nasal, don't they? Um, just a bit, <laughs> a bit sort of like you're listening to them in the bath with your head under the, under the water. Yeah, slightly like that. A little like that, but they're fun. Yeah. They're really fun. Yeah. And, you know, they, they weren't cutting edge hi-fi in 78. They certainly aren't now, but, no. but they've got, they've got something, they've got a character, they've yeah. got a je ne sais quoi, haven't they? I, I think that's a great point. So a lot of people, um, you know, of a certain age will say that modern speakers sound too analytical. Mm -hmm. So, you know, with modern design techniques, obviously CAD, computer-aided design and, and so on, all these sort of fancy design packages you can get, you can end up with, you can get yourself a speaker with a very, a very flat frequency response. Uh, and even in the budget uh, sphere, you know, the kind of basic Q acoustics or acoustic energy a 100s that kind of thing uh you know we'll we'll have a pretty reasonably flat frequency response um but of course that was you know this was all before that really yes um and so they 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 don't have the kind of rule of flat frequency response they do have a certain character <laughs> far from um, it <laughs> a certain yeah it's absolutely and, and yeah. the um Certainly, the bass is slightly bumpy in in the sort of upper bass, isn't it? They're great for disco. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they're just yeah. they're disco speakers, pure, yeah. pure, pure yeah. you know, through yeah. and through. They're yeah. great. They yeah. really rock it on, yeah. don't they? Well, um, Wolfdale quote a frequency response of eighty hertz to twenty kilohertz at minus five dB points, and I think there's there's quite a lot going on in the mid range, and they tail off a bit at, at the top. And they tail off a bit, you yeah, know, they do, uh, they in do. the sort of uh, bottom of the upper bass. They do. Um, so there's no low bass at all. No. Uh, and there's a bit of a bump, a uh, kind of a present, you know, kind of a, a little little boost, as it were, around maybe I'm guessing, but 120 hertz. Sure. Uh, and then they sort of me meander away uh, through the mid band, probably like go a bit zingy uh, in the in the sort of uh, presence region, and then they sort of tail down a bit. Yes. Um, yeah. But so they're not flat. They're not a kind of reference speaker at all. No, but they have no. character, uh, and I think that's a really important thing because you can put certain types of music on, and they just like it. And they what enjoy did we themselves. What did we play? And we said, yeah. if you know, if you wanted to demo them, you'd play that. What, what, did we Chic. It was it was good, good times. Like good times yeah. by Chic, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, with with that amazing bass line. Um, yeah. uh, you know. Bernard, Ed, Bernard Edwards' yeah. bass line, and it was just, it was thumping out, wasn't it? it <laughs> These little <laughs> things, it was so yeah. cool. Um, yeah. you know, so they're literally lovable. Yeah. They're really lovable. Yeah. They're like a, you know, like a sort of like an, an old cat, which you've had for ages, yeah. and you just, you know, you, yeah. you, you know, just part of the family. Yeah. They're really lovely things. Um, so they're, but, they're basically um, th uh, 30 centimetres tall, about the same as an LP. Yes. Uh, 240, um, uh, 24 centimetres by 22. Um, uh, but the interesting thing here, we, we've got, as Mike, my assistant, will demonstrate, an, an eight-inch bass unit. Yeah, look almost. at that. That's so cool. Um, well, go. it's not quite, but it's uh, it's nearly there. But it's way bigger than you'd get from uh, massive. from a, uh, a modern speaker. Yeah, because um, normally you'd have two drive units. Yeah, so. yeah. And, and, a, and a much narrower front baffle these days. Mm -hmm. um, so basically, you get, you get a, a big sound, and it's not quite as compressed... Uh, perhaps as as many modern small speakers, it doesn't sound like it's being squeezed out of a toothpaste tube. No, quite so. No, that's so true. That's um, so true. Yeah, and uh, so it's very distinctive, and nothing like you would you could buy today. Not not a prayer. Yeah, not a prayer. Nothing really sounds quite like these yeah. in, in many ways. You know what you should do with these? What? <laughs> <laughs> you should send these to so, Anna Peach. Oh, I thought that's, you should. No, I wasn't going to be I rude. Going to say it was a family show, Mike. I wasn't so. going to be rude. You should send these yeah. to Anna Peach Audio yeah. Yeah. and get them to um to do their yeah. magic on it. I bet that'd be well yes. cool. Yes, let's so. get some hundred pound per per uh, meter <laughs> um, internal wiring in something like that, and some proper sockets at the back. Yes. And yeah. and get them to put a drive unit just above just above there, which just, which so we got some treble. And in fact, we, I had a brilliant idea. 
had a fantastic idea. And what I said, I, to, I wouldn't call it brilliant. It's Mike, brilliant. It's inspired. Uh, uh, what I said to David is because he should he should get a pair of Townsend super tweeters uh, with these because they would be fantastic. So you've got your thirty seven pound loudspeakers and a pair of twelve hundred quid or whatever it yes. is. So uh, super tweeters. 30, 30 pounds on Facebook Marketplace yes. plus a twelve hundred pound pair of Townsend ribbon super tweeters, Mike. That's a brilliant idea. And, and I don't know why I didn't have that myself. <laughs> and then Anna Peach the whole <laughs> lot and get them to sort of somehow glue them on top yes, or something. So that's right. Um, I, I would I would say look, these are you should you if if anybody's sort of into sort of hi fi history or you know curios. You should definitely buy a pair of these because they're worth a listen. They're great fun. They're, they're not the last word in hi-fi by any shape or form. Yeah. But they're really there's something about them which is just very, very lovable. Very, yeah. very lovable. And um, uh, it, we, had, we had a great laugh today listening to a really dodgy disco music from 78 yes. um, to, to do that. And, and we, we played them through... Um, through that lovely exposure 3510 pre-power. So this is a classic Mike and Dave system. Yeah. You know, we've got this uh, um, sort of you know, high-end streamer, 3510 pre-power, uh, you know, three grand's worth of amplifiers and 30 quid Facebook marketplace yep. speakers, um, just sort of, just because we can. Absolutely um, great. Yeah. But, but I, I think the, these are, to me, these are a fascinating um, kind of... Um, uh, piece of memorabilia really for you it takes you back to the 70s when really does. this would not have been regarded as a, an outrageous or a weird speaker it was just you know you bought this as an entry level to get into the real into the hi world of real hi-fi uh, and uh, you know when you got some more cash you got you got a pair of Lintons or something absolutely you know uh, yeah, uh, yeah. a Gets year or in. two later to upgrade yeah um, and uh, you know you were happy with what you've got and they have a a romantic and fun sound, um, and and shall we say not terribly accurate, but it certainly fits the um, fits the genre of popular music in the day. Did you say uh, that your dad had a pair of these? Yeah, so he had the XPs, which were the, the basically the ones before this, but they were pretty much identical. Uh, and I kind of started listening to proper hi-fi with a. <laughs> A Garrard SP25, yeah, and a, and a little Sony TA73 amp, and a pair of these, and uh, you know, many happy memories. Actually, sure, it was good sure. fun, and I did cycle all the way into town. I lived in 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 this village, I think, at that time where we are now, and cycled seven miles into town to buy Saturday Night Fever on its first day of release. No, did I you? Did. Yeah. You've never told me that. And before. it was May. I think it was it was May the 25th or something like really? that. Really? And it was absolutely pissing it down with rain so <laughs> you spit like today so you so. bought it home and you had a soggy saturday night I fever yes i've had a few of those yeah okay. <laughs> um so didn't your mum have a didn't your mum make a comment about them yes my mum said uh when when my dad had set up his first ever stereo system oh that's got a nice tone <laughs> so, <laughs> so excellent i think that's that's that kind of sums the 70s up really so Speakers were bought because they had a nice tone. Can I just say, uh, Mrs. Price, if you're watching this, I can hear you saying that. That's just a sort of lovely thing you would say. Your mum's lovely. She would have She's said dear at the end of she it. She probably yeah. would, yes. So, it's got a nice tone, That's dear. nice, dear. Yeah. 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 Yes. It's got a nice yeah. tone. But, <laughs> Fabulous. You know, so many uh, speakers in that era were designed to have a nice tone. A hundred percent, yes. And the, the yeah. idea of having a neutral monitor speaker like the LS35A was was quite wacky and weird. Yes, you know? yeah. So in sure, mainstream sure. hi-fi you bought speakers because they, the speaker, sounded good. Yes. You know, not the music, the speaker. So uh, it kind of shows you how how far we've come. And um, that would have been a good system, wouldn't it? You know, yeah. like a, a garage turntable and these. And what, yeah. what amp would have, would have been in, in play then? Yeah, well, there, there'd be all sorts. I what, mean, did, what did your dad have? He had a Sony TA73, okay. which is a 60 quid Sony uh, entry level beginner's uh, Sony amp made in, in uh, South Korea. Right. So even then, uh, Japan was outsourcing to cheaper countries yeah, yeah. Uh, for, their, for, their, for their budget stuff. Um, but you could have had the Trio KA3700, oh, yes. yeah. um, the JVC JS 11G, you know, or there's a whole load of those kind of 60, 70 pound uh, amplifiers that, you know, invariably had a brushed aluminium fascia and big 
control knobs and often had 25 watts per channel or something like that right yeah um, and yeah. Uh, and they would have driven these fine these have got a sensitivity of 89 db quoted yes. yeah uh, and that's not bad actually for a 70 speaker most 70 speakers were horribly inefficient um and also because it's got no base ports as well so no, it's, sure. it's a it's an infinite baffle design and um you know it's uh it's kind of it's actually more efficient than all of the larger speakers in the range not least because it doesn't have a crossover <laughs> yes of course so, yeah how mad is that you know, so yes. there we go yeah. so excellent yeah excellent it's been great fun listening to these yeah, we, we, yeah. we're very lucky here because david david has a, a hi-fi museum as you may or may not know it's called my um, house which is your house <laughs> uh, your living room your spare room your attic, attic. everything um, kitchen and and from time to yeah. time he digs out these little gems for us to well, for me to come and have a listen to and uh so it's been brilliant thanks for bringing these along yep to antiques roadshow absolutely <laughs> yeah. Yeah. um look thank you all very much indeed for watching this episode of oh we haven't rated them retro we haven't reformata. done a retro reformata yeah. <gasps> oh it was nearly a school bear wasn't it what well look you go go for it what are you going to give your own speakers <laughs> <laughs> well I'll, I'll shall i do a mic and give it anything i've got i'll give it 10 <laughs> yes that's right yeah because so, i own it um, no, I mean, I'll, I'll give these, so for a 1978 speaker that costs 37 quid, it's probably about as good as you can get, so that they're probably yeah. about nine, uh, but, uh, you if know. You, if you take price into the equation. Yeah, yeah. exactly, but yeah. It, it, compared to any modern speaker, um, you know, they're a long way short of that, probably yeah, about six and are. a half. Yes, yeah, um, yeah. But they're, they're, they're not accurate, but they're fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll go along with everything yeah. you just said, yeah. I think. Absolutely. Yeah. Somewhere between six and a half and nine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A nice that, that narrows it down. It, absolutely, it? absolutely. But yeah. you're all, you're right for all the reasons. But great fun and a, and a really lovely thing to listen to. And there we are. Look, we'll, I'm sure we will get back to normal yep. uh, on our next riff. Thank you very much indeed for watching this one. And we look forward very much to seeing you at the next episode of Mike and Dave's Hi-Fi Riff. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Thank you.